Hi guys and welcome to another vlog. This one is going to be slightly different. It's going to be a product review. Uh, I'm outdoors. It's been a lovely day today so I'm filming this out um, by this uh, forest here. And the product review I'm going to be looking at is uh, the tripod that I've been using pretty much exclusively now um, for the last about two to three years. Um, so it's a long term review. It's the only tripod I actually have left now, apart from the small one that I put my um, uh, vlogging camera on my phone on sometimes, which uh, isn't really a tripod. Uh, it's more of a um, selfie stick with some feet on the bottom. You couldn't do any proper photography with it, for instance. Um, uh, so like I said, I've been using this for probably about two to three years now. I first bought this with my very first trip in the van to Scotland and I've pretty much uh, been using it ever since so it's done me really well it's so far this tripod has been with me on two trips to Europe uh, two trips to Scotland um, it also came with me hiking in Wales and it's also been um, to Iceland with me um, it's had a lot of use in it it does a lot of landscape photography and a lot of seascape photography. It's often in the water, often in the sea. In fact, there is still um, sand all over the feet at the moment. You can probably just about pick up. Um, and if I undo some of the stuff by the, the uh, microphone here, some of the legs, you can probably hear all the, the sand in the, the legs and things like that. Um, so I don't particularly look after it very well. Um, I would highly, highly recommend it. Now it's a newer tripod and it's a bit like my camera bag, this tripod, as in um, it's not actually made by newer or if it is, it's made for other companies. Um, my bag's very much the similar. My bag you can get, um, which I've done a review of in the past, you can buy my camera bag made by several different companies, but they all, all are pretty similar designs and you can tell the bags are actually all made in the same factory. Um, just with different specifications um, that the different manufacturers or the different brands um, kind of request. I'm pretty sure this tripod is the same because you can buy this tripod under several names. And the good thing about that is it means that they're generally going to have okay reliability because um, lots of them will be sold. They'll be sold in quantity, um, which means any issues are likely to be ironed out of them um, quicker and also they have uh, a lot of brands that are kind of selling them under their name so they have to be good it also means that the unit prices are a lot less now this is a full carbon fiber tripod um, carbon fiber and aluminium so it's very light uh, the ball head is actually prob probably one of the heaviest things on this tripod and I'll put the measurements and the weights for this tripod on the video as I talk through it because I can't actually remember them off the top of my head um, it's a travel tripod so it doesn't go massively high um, if I extend the feet out now I'll give you a rough idea it does have twist lock feet but you do have to um, twist them all the way around to make it lock off it's not like a quick lock or anything should just be able to see that in the in the frame um, now that on me is kind of about chest height you do also have this column here which extends up um, and then you can probably just about get to something just below my chin say just around my neck probably and by the time you have the camera on there it will just get to my eye line if I if I kind of crouch down slightly um, I am six foot three so um, not the short on the shortest side but basically for me for traveling for the kind of photography i do um it's a great tripod um i've scuffed it around a lot over the years it's always come out fine the carbon fiber legs do mark up slightly when you catch them on rocks when you're doing seascape stuff and when i've dropped it and also it is on the the side of my camera bag this exposed and every time i'm hiking and put the bag down it generally gets put up against a rock um but it's had no real effects you can adjust this tripod and I will make it a bit smaller so you can actually see me doing it easier. You can actually adjust the legs on it as well. So by pushing these buttons in here 
and these never get used to be honest so they're probably a bit seized up but you can actually move the leg up like that or it can lock in like that position or it can go all the way down here you can actually as well fling it all the way up and have it like that the other way around and if you were to shorten the legs down like that you could actually um, have the tripod upside down or inversed I should show you a bit like that and then by using this center column and lowering the tripod down you can get your camera kind of right off the ground then when you're shooting with it um, generally speaking I don't really use that very often um, it's very rare you actually have to get the camera that low to be honest but it's an option there if you want to use it um, now I've taken these apart in the past to clean them out with sand and stuff I don't generally do it um, the locks in here are ceramic locks um, there's three blades that lock onto the carbon fiber leg so they are good quality You've also got good quality rubber feet um, that have never come off it. And it's generally an all round pretty decent tripod. Um, very light for what it is. Um, the only downside I'd have with it is the rubber grips on the legs when you get it wet, when you're doing seascapes. Sometimes they will spin, um, but the aluminium underneath the actual lock bit won't you just end up turning the rubber grips um, that's the only downside it also has a hook on the bottom here which you can pull out there like that to hang your camera bag on and it also even has they've even gone for the effort of putting a rubber o-ring here um, you can hear all the sand in it now if i uh, undo that now this rubber o-ring when you close the legs it does actually sit against that carbon fiber legs and it stops it kind of knocking it and scratching it. Now the ball head is um, quite a nice one actually. You can order these tripods um, several options. Um, you can have cheaper ball heads, more expensive ones. Um, this one here is probably the, I think this was the more expensive one at the time I bought it. It's a fluid motion ball head, <clears throat> which means you can unlock this here, uh, this lock, and it will generally turn quite smoothly. Um, like I say, it's three years old and it still does turn smoothly, even with all the sound it's had in there. The only thing that is really confusing with this tripod, or the ball head, shall I say, is it has two locks um, uh, for the top bit. Now they both do exactly the same thing. One is called a speed lock, um, one's just a normal lock. As far as I can tell though, one's fractionally quicker, but they both do the same thing. You can lock it off just by using one. Um, and, and you really have to force it to try and turn it. Um, and that's with me not doing it very tightly at all. You can lock it off with the other one, the same effect. Um, you don't have to do both. The good thing with it is if it is really windy, I will lock them both off and that is, in my mind, I know then that tripod is dead stable. Right, sorry for the random cut, I had to move on because they are actually doing some forestry work in there uh, at the moment. I thought they would have finished for the day. Um, so yeah, the tripod. Um, so the ball head on this one, like I was saying before, um, the it does actually have two speed locks on it. Um, for locking this top section off. Um, you can use them independently or you can lock them both off, which is what I often do if it's really windy. Um, the lock on the top works really well. You do have a level in this bit here and you do also have a spirit level in the clamp. Um, not any issues with it at all. I use this most of the time with an L bracket, which is permanently fixed to uh, the Canon 6D. There is actually a stag that came out on the road here in front of the van. In fact, there's two of them now, um, which is quite cool to watch here. Uh, so yeah, I keep getting distracted by them, so I'll put some video up so you can uh, see what I'm talking about. Um, yeah, really cool tripod. I'd highly recommend it. Now this tripod cost me 
about I think it was about 110 pounds that was like I say about two and a half years ago um, and I would highly recommend it the only other issue I do have occasionally with this tripod is you can unscrew the ball head really easily um, you just twist it like that and turn it off with your hand um, unfortunately because you adjust it a lot obviously when you have the camera on there occasionally you can unscrew this bit by accident the whole ball head so you could get around that you could put some glue on the threads or some loctite i never have it's never been a massive issue uh, it's been just one to bear in mind um, they are quite interchangeable and this tripod also has which you probably noticed this foam section and that is because you can actually unscrew um, this leg from the tripod and you end up with a monopod then um, so what you can do is you can actually fit uh, the ball head on top of this um, which means you have a monopod then you can also put a compass on the top that comes with it and you can also use it just as a uh, walking pole if you're hiking somewhere and you just want a bit of extra stability um, so it can be used uh, for additional things apart from just um, a tripod you can kind of take it off and use it as a mono as well um, and it just screws back on here quite simply like that so yeah like I say I definitely recommend it um, I've not had any issues at all now before I had this tripod I did have a uh, verb bomb I think they're called a uh, plasticky tripod which was okay for the money but when I started to do photography when there's a tiny bit of wind, in, wind involved and stuff like that um, it just wouldn't keep the camera stable enough and you used to get I used to get loads of problems uh, with blurring the images I also used to do seascape photography of that tripod and it only lasted about three four months after I started doing that the metal pins rusted uh, which meant it cracked the plastic uh, where the pins went through um, this was my second tripod after that and it is still pretty much as good as the day I bought it now for 110 pounds uh, I can't really complain to be honest it's still working three years later and it does get a lot of abuse I'll put the links up for this um, on the in the description they will be Amazon referral links I bought it from Amazon all that time ago they do still sell uh, the newer one I believe or variants of it on there and there are various different ones when you look into it like I said the price difference is normally reflected by um, the tripod or the ball head sorry um, this was the smooth uh, 360 um, kind of panning ball head so it was a bit more expensive but I believe you can get these for around about £90 now or £100 these tripods Anyway, um, that pretty much sums it up. I hope you uh, found this vlog interesting. If you're thinking of looking uh, at getting a new tripod or yours is a bit worn out, uh, like I say, I can highly recommend it. Hope you found it useful and interesting. And if you fancy purchasing it, you should check out the links below or you might be able to find these on eBay as well, to be honest. I got this off Amazon because it came kind of next day on Prime and stuff. Um, yeah, anyway, I'll catch up with you in future ones. I'm hopefully going to get out with the camera some point over the next couple of days. I've not been out with, at all with it now for about two weeks, really. I've not just had, I've just not had the time. So, yeah, I'll catch up with you on the future vlogs, and I hope you found this one interesting.